Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and I am the Math Lab Coordinator in MBSS 222. And my job is to tutor uh, those students who need help in math here at Walter State. And today we're going to do a lesson on factoring and this is the lesson uh, for part one of a multiple part uh, lesson on factoring. And um, this lesson is not to replace your les lectures that your teachers give you. And they will not match completely what your teachers give you because they're a, a little bit different, um, but there's kind of a supple supplemental and uh, I hope that they will help. But this one um, is on the greatest common factor. And again, these are lessons um, to be listened to after you've uh, heard your teacher and her lessons or his lessons. Um, but this one is on the greatest common factor, and we abbreviate that uh, GCF, and you'll hear us use that uh, terminology quite frequently. And um, in what this is really after factoring in general is to undo our multiplication. It is to allow us to do some division problems. It is allow us to do some um, manipulation of our algebra that we are uh, that's required and needed for problems um, in later on in algebra as well as in calculus and some of you will say well I'm not doing those classes I'm not going any further in algebra um, I'm not going uh, into calculus well that may be true but it is also good uh, problem solving skills and uh, it's a requirement so we're going to sit here and we're going to listen and, and you, you need to kind of learn this um, but a factor, remember, is two things that are multiplied. And so what we want to do is change the expression 2x plus 10 into two things that are multiplied that will give me 2x plus 10. And so when we start this out, we want to think of something that is common, that's the word common, that multiplies with both the 2 and the 10. And in this case, it's not going to be the x because there's not an x there over here. So it's going to be the number. And the number that we see will be 2. Now, when we think of this, we're not going to write this next step. But this is the step that we think in our head. And again, this is the think step. not a right step. And I'm still not sure that that's a good view, so we're going to maybe just a little bit more. So that we have that common factor of a 2. So then we are thinking division. 2 gives, goes into 2x and leaves that x. So we bring out the 2 and leave the x. That's the most common terminology you'll hear us as teachers say. Bring out the 2 and leave the x. What do we mean by bring out? Well, we're going to write the 2 on the outside of a parenthesis and then on the inside leave an x because we're going to use this as a distributive property where that 2 is distributed to both terms, the 2x and the 10, which can be thought of as 2 times 5. Now that 5 is also left in the second term because if I bring the 2 as the common factor outside, the 5 is left. Now I have two things that are multiplied the 2 and the x plus 5. And if I have 2 times x plus 5, that then gives me two things multiplied. And if I multiply it back, 2 times x 
Remember, distributive property will multiply that 2 by both terms inside. Gives me 2x and 2 times 5, which is 10. So this over here is my check. And if I get back what I started with, which I do, then I've done it correct. And this over here is my answer. Now, we are not going to write this much down every time we do it, but I was really trying to work through and explain all these steps. And again, this is our think step, not our write step. But because I'm giving this lecture via uh, the uh, uh, a video stream, I'll often write down those think steps that if you came in, we would just talk about. Okay, let's look at our second example here. We have 10x to the third minus 5x squared plus 25x. Okay, what did they have in common? Well, first of all, let's notice that each of these terms have an x in common. And then they each have a 5 that's in common. How do we determine what the common factor is? Well, we want the greatest one that will divide into each of these, which would be an x, and the greatest number, well, all of these numbers are divisible by 5. So again, we're thinking 5x times something. Well, 5 times 2 gives me 10. If I take 1x away, remember that when I divide, I'll need 3 minus 1, which is 2. What do I do with my exponents when I divide? I subtract my exponents when I divide. So that's where this comes from because 1 plus 2, when I multiply, I add my exponents. Second term would be 5x times x. 5x times x. Exponents would be 1 plus 1 to give me 2 plus 5x times 5. And I don't need an x here because I already have an x to the first power. So my common factor is 5x. 5 goes into 10 two times. There are three x's multiplied. One of them is here. The other two go here. In the second term, 5 goes into 5 one time. 1x here, 1x here. 1 plus 1 gives me 2. Plus 5 goes into 25 five times. And then the x is here, so I don't need the x here. And if I multiply that back, 5x times 2x gives me 10x to the third. 5x times 1x gives me 5x squared. And it keeps that minus sign that would be right in front. And 5x times 5 would give me 25x. Okay, let's look at the next example. 6x squared minus 3x, and the common factor here would be a 3x. So we'd have 3x times 2x to give me 6x squared minus 3x times, well, 3 goes into 3 and leaves me 1, and I've gotten rid of the x, so there's no x there. So the common factor, again, is 3x. And again, this is not what you write. It's what you think. Because when you bring the 3x out, you can think 3 goes into 6 to get the 2. I've taken one of the x's out, and I get the x. And just like I thought here, 3 goes into itself one time. And then I have that x already, so I have nothing else left. 
But notice we have to have something there. We can't just leave it blank because when I use my distributive property, if I don't have anything there, I don't have anything to multiply with. Because when I use my distributive property to check, I have 3x times 2x, which gives me the 6x squared. I need something here to multiply by 1 to get the 3x. 3x times 1 is 3x. And this is a very powerful tool that 1 is a factor of everything, or when I divide something into itself, it gives me 1. That's a very powerful tool that we'll use uh, quite frequently. Okay, we have two more examples here. On this one, we have a 3 that's common. And let's see if we can skip that uh, think, that right step, and see if it, it flows. And in this case, we want to take out the greatest common factor. And remember, in that case, we want to take out, in this case, an x squared. Now, in the other cases, we always took out just the x. But in this case, we want to take out the x squared because it's the smallest x we have. Because I can take 2 here, I can take 2 away from the 3, and I can take 2 away from the 4 and not create any negative numbers. So that's the smallest I can take, or excuse me, that's the largest I can take and not create any negative numbers. Now, 3 goes into 6 two times. 3 into 6 two times. 2. 3 times 2 to give me 6. Now, if there are 4 total and 2 of them are out here, I need 2 here because remember we'll multiply those exponents when we use our distributive. We're multiplying, so we'll add those exponents when we just use distributive property. The signs don't change. 3 goes into 3 one time, and I can write the 1 or I could just leave the 1 off either way. And I have 2 here. 3 minus 2 leaves me 1 there. 3 goes into 9 three times, and I've got both of the squares there, so there are none left, and I'm through here. Now, later, we will factor this more. But right now, we don't have that ability to factor that anymore, so we have factored out that greatest common factor. So at this point, we're just going to leave it just like it is. And we have one last example, x squared minus 4, and we're looking for the common factor. Well, they don't share an x. They don't share a 2 or a 4, which are the numbers that go into 4. As a matter of fact, all they show is a 1. So we could write it as 1 times x squared minus 4. And that is the only way we could write it as a set of two things multiplied. And again, we'll use this fact a little bit later on as we... Uh, you do some factoring by grouping, and it's the fact that 1 or negative 1 is a factor of everything. But in this case, we wouldn't use the greatest common factor on this one because it doesn't contain 1. Now, there are other ways to factor this. My pencil's giving out on me. But we have not got to those yet, so we'll just leave it like this as factoring the greatest common factor. It does not have a greatest common factor. Therefore, we're through factoring at this point. And this is a short lesson on factoring the greatest common factor. But it is it doesn't cover all possibilities. So if you do have some additional questions, please feel free to come by 
and I'll be glad to sit with you and work with you on factoring the greatest common factor. Thank you.